You feel Survivor's Pokeball kind of shake as if asking to be let out. Uh oh. Okie dokie. Oh, Are you going to allow Viper out? Sure, why not? Kendra and Tazel, for the first time, you two will see one of Zubat Boy's new creatures. It is an eight foot serpent, large enough to swallow a child. Or at least some Cyndaquil. Or at least a couple of Cyndaquil, whom it will be eyeing at this point, though not willing to disobey you entirely in order to go eat them. <laughs> Holy crap. When did you get that? Kendra's mouth just falls open a little bit, and she's like, she just laughs and chuckles. She's like, damn, kid. For once, what? I must say, I am impressed. <laughs> Awesome. It opens its that? mouth and reveals this red forked tongue. <laughs> Doing that, she immediately remembers her friend <laughs> mm -hmm. and does mm -hmm. a thing, pull, pulling pulling out the Dave. All right, Dave, Dave hits the field. Dave hits the field confused. He's like, oh, oh, oh. Kind of hovers I'll, over I'll, you. I'll pat um, his little eye, I guess. <laughs> All right. Pat his little bulb. And after patting him, what do you wish to do with Dave? Uh, I tell Dave, be like, I would like to connect um, our link, please. Mm. Have Dave make an intelligence check. Hold on. <laughs> <Fuck>. <laughs> I'm afraid I must ask. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> One thing Dave's not ready for yet. <laughs> okay. It is oh, fuzzy. Well, that's not bad. <laughs> it is fuzzy and, and not as clear as it has been historically, but you see a very it's like it's like looking through the eyes of someone who really needs their glasses and doesn't have them on but you get this image from like the height of where a certain cobra's head would be and you see the visage of the edge of a town but it, the connection is severed at this point as the snake realizes something is up and kind of shakes its head okay can Kendra roll a history check? Absolutely. What the fuck is my history? It is an intelligence ah. roll if you are not proficient. Fuck. <laughs> well, what, is it, what is it you were trying to remember? Oh, uh, I was trying to remember um, if I knew what town he was looking at. The details of the image were a little too fuzzy for you to really tell what it is. And he was sort of gla he was sort of glaring inward from a strange angle that a person would never normally go. So it's difficult to tell. Um, see, my boy, as Kendra is is dicking with Dave, trying to do some sort of psychic thing, you see uh, Viper sort of start to like hawk something up. What? They start, <laughs> Viper kind of starts to like convulse, and you see them kind of like you see something kind of like moving up their throat. Oh no! <laughs> My God! Oh, yes. Interesting. Oh yes, I remember. A, why. <laughs> a very demented puzzle box will be spit out on the floor. A puzzle box. It looks to be made of these non-uniform, unconcentric shapes that sort of move on their own. The box almost doesn't seem to stay in one shape at any given time. I thought it was brutal. Cool. And after spitting that out, Viper is going to ask you to return to the Pokeball as it seems like it is not feeling well. Uh, Kendra's going to roll an investigation okay. check. <laughs> All right. Kendra, this box appears to be made nice. of multiple substances at once. It is like 
It wants to be made of a strange bronze metal. All the fittings outside of it are like a gold and dirty bronze. And the actual box is this pink shifting to blue, shifting to red. It's not quite plastic. It's not quite polymer. It's like it's not quite anything at any given time. Uh, Tazzle, now would be a great time to go and get that new stick of yours. Oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> I will wander Dave, my stick. My stick. Dave, if you <laughs> could so kindly levitate this box and take it outside away from prying eyes, please. Uh, excuse <laughs> me, that came out of my snake. It's mine. Yes. Zubat boy, but if this thing is a fucking bomb or something? <laughs> also, there's this room full of people that we don't know and I do not trust. So we're leaving! <laughs> With it. Okie dokie. And I'd rather not touch it. Because <laughs> unfortunately, from our previous experience yesterday, touching random objects this is apparently not a good thing. <laughs> We're going to be leaving now. <laughs> with the bucket object. So, are you going to ask Dave to move the box? And Zuba, yes. are you okay with Dave moving the box? I'll allow it. You see Dave's eye begin to glow the standard pink that it does when he uses his psychic power. The box is surrounded by a pink hue. Dave is unable to lift it. What? <laughs> huh. Is there anybody in this Dave lobby sort of right looks now? looks up at you disappointed, like, I tried. The only people in this lobby are the cook behind the counter, who's not paying any attention to you guys, as he's sort of focused scrubbing his little thing. Can uh, I'm going to... Mm -hmm. okay. Go ahead, Zubat Boy. I'm gonna throw out come, nice. and I'm gonna right. ask if it if if it can pick it up. Oh, oh yes, have the have the acid monster pick up the fucking Ooh. random cubicle box. <laughs> uh, as I mean, it survived being to... in a, a viper's acidic stomach, so <laughs> he did. As as come tries to envelop the box, it's almost as if it repulses him. There's just a square-shaped hole in him. He's used to kind of just rolling over the thing he wants to eat instead of putting it in his mouth. But there's just a square-shaped hole in him where the box is just emitting a zone of don't touch me. <laughs> and he kind of looks at me, he's like, oh, oh. He looks at you, he points at the hole, he's like, oh, oh. <laughs> okay, good try, buddy. I know where you've been. I know what you've eaten. Uh, can, um, can Krabby go over and try to, or Strafe go over and try to pick it up? This claws. All right. As Strafe attempts to grab it, you can see their claw begin to rapidly change color with the box. No way. It goes from red, and then it sinks up to the pink. Then it turns red, then it turns pink, then it turns blue, then it turns green. As their shell armor begins to just rapidly pulse like an RGB light... Strafe is just immediately repulsed and sort of lets go before their claw very slowly returns to the normal hue. Huh. Is Strafe's claw okay? Strafe looks down at it for a minute, kind of looks at the box, looks over at you and just goes, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. He, he just like strafes his way back over. He's like, I'm not doing it. Mm -mm. <laughs> I choose no. I choose no. <laughs> not Eh, fuck it, I'm I'll just gonna it take it. No, okay, you well, can do that. All right, Zubat, Zubat, Zubat boy, you want to pick it up? Sure, why not? Zubat boy, as you pick up the box, there's nothing special about it when you grab it. You can't understand why Dave couldn't pick it up. It doesn't do anything to your hand. But you do notice two things about the box. Zubat boy, to you, it smells lovely, clean, fresh. It smells like one of those pine tree uh, air fresheners. It's designed to just smell like nature. It, it's as if a clean, fresh, fresh air, air is blowing out of this box at all times. And it makes your hand feel clean. 
and pure, like a hand sanitizer that doesn't need to be wet or sticky or even make contact with you is constantly enveloping your hand, making it perfectly clean and pure. Interesting. I'm going to uh, rub my uh, armpits with it, you know. <laughs> it will have the same effect on any part of you that it touches. Hells yeah, hot damn. Kendra's just going to fur her eyebrows, look at you, bad boy, and she's like, the fuck are you doing, child? <laughs> it makes me feel clean. What? Neato. Would you would you like Kendra to hold it, or will you allow Kendra to hold it? Uh, I want to investigate it first. I just want to see if I can... Sure, sure. go ahead and try. As you look at the box, you are, you are made aware, having it this up close, it is... This intricate web of metal oh fittings God. of brass and gold with blue and red and green and all sorts of different prismatic hues shifting and ebbing underneath of those metal fixations. Mm. Maybe we should take this to the museum. Uh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Maybe Kendra, are you still interested it. in holding it? I will touch it briefly. Seeing that it is okay in the hands of Zubat Boy. <laughs> Kendra, as you touch it, you are shocked that Zubat Boy is holding this. It feels frigidly cold to you, like a pole in the middle of winter. Immediately at the realization of the thing being extremely cold. I take Mr. Fister out and I'm just like, look at him and I'm just like, can you check out this box, please? <laughs> sure. Fister will listen to you. He'll look at the box and go, oh, that's kind of cool. And he goes to hover over to it. As he gets close to it, you see this little arc of almost invisible, it's like infrared light just arcs off of the box and strikes Fister in the forehead, and you see him sort of collapse in on himself for a moment before returning to his normal form, and he looks back and he goes, uh -uh, and he just collapses back in his Pokeball. Oh, my God. Um, this is just... Kendra, you have um, never seen Fister so afraid of something, not even the Night King. Zubat boy. <laughs> Not gonna bring this to the museum. <laughs> um, you can't even touch it, apparently. So I guess. Uh... No, no, no. I I can touch it, but wait, 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 wait. first before I I, I, I can oh. explain something. <laughs> is my is my Discord having a fuck up, or did anyone else just hear Kennedy lag a little bit? There? I did. I yeah, I she like good, stuttered yeah. really bad. I heard that too. Okay. Okay, well, whatever. <laughs> it, it seems to have recovered, but Kennedy, I, I, I thought for a second I was going to crash or something, but it sounds like your, your internet might have had an issue. Oh, okay. Just so you're aware, oh, if, we, if we lose track of something you say. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I... We, we need to go outside. <laughs> okay, we can go outside. Tazel, both of them have put their hand on the box at this point, and you have to the box. Are you interested in touching the box? Are you going to ask them to do so? Um, yeah, I'll give it up, give it a try. Okay. I'm going to ask you, are you simply going to place your hand on it, or are you going to hold it? Um, I will, I will play, I will try, I'll hold it. Okay. So, bad boy, Tazel is going to ask you to hold the box for a moment. Okay. Tazel, as soon as it reaches your hands, you immediately feel all of the muscles in your arms begin to strain. Everywhere you touch this thing, your hand looks like you stuck it in a vat of permanent marker ink. And you see your skin kind of get a little peely. Okay, I'm going to drop it. Yep. When you are no longer touching the box, your skin will return to normal. But you still see like a little, you seem a little ashy where it touched you. It was a, something necrotic was briefly in contact with you. 
Are these things reflecting our Pokemon? But that doesn't make sense, because Tazzle doesn't have any heavy Pokemon. I'm saying this all out loud. <laughs> all right. Feel free Ken to comment. Kennedy is, <laughs> or Kendra is spitballing, um, trying to get, get some rationalization. Unless by light, it's like kind of flying, or... <laughs> well, yeah, that would... I mean, it felt very light all of a sudden for Tazzle, so flying Pokemon. But it's hot for me, awesome. so fire. Nickelback is very heavy. Mm, my cold one would make sense because it feels like ghost types. The, necro the necrosis would make sense because of the poison types. Mm -hmm. But not the clear stuff, unless you caught something that you want to tell us about. <laughs> <laughs> Zubat, boy, would you care to share with them the properties of Coom? It's oh, yeah. dark. Like me. <laughs> yes, but more importantly that he does not operate like a normal Grimer. Do you have a Pokemon that cleanses things? Or? I didn't... Well, I wouldn't know. I did notice he didn't smell bad. This thing doesn't seem to be producing any kind of smell. That face. All right, Zubat Boy oh, throws out face. Coom. Are you going to tell them anything about Mr. Coom, Zubat Boy? Like one. Wait, have I already told them about this? You may have already told them, but it seems like they forgot both out and in character. Would you like to remind them? It's not like a regular Grimer. It cleans. There you oh. go. Mm. Uh -huh. So it cleanses things. This thing is reflecting our Pokemon. Hmm. How the hell is it doing that? <laughs> that must have, it must hell have been I know. psychic. I mean... Do we even keep going to the museum? Because the museum doesn't have anything for this. They're all focused on fossil types. Does do it? Do either of you have Pokeballs? No. Uh, no. <laughs> Everyone is out of Pokeballs. <laughs> I was yeah, wondering no. what would happen if you threw a Pokeball at this thing. Uh, I can. Yeah, I mean, we 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 need to we need to go there anyway, so might as well. Try. You guys going to the store? <laughs> We're going to the store, I guess. Who wants to carry the box? I will. Uh, okay. All right. See you that Tazzle, are you just carrying it? to the museum. <laughs> Tazzle, are you carrying it in your left or your yeah, right? Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think we should go to the museum. Um, seeing as they only focus on the fossils, and there's one Pokeball professor there, so they do, wouldn't really know anything or help us. <laughs> uh, right hand. Tazzle, the box feels incredibly light. I'm so excited. Is it heavy? As you put it in your left hand, you almost drop it as it begins to feel like a 50 pound weight. Oh my. Okay, okay so I'll use my right hand. <laughs> and... Yes. Okay. Kendra and Zubat Boy, you are both observant enough to notice the behavior that Tazzle exhibits. As he switches it from one hand and grabs, grapples it as if it's going to float away from him. And then tosses it to the other and almost breaks his hand. This thing switches per hand, guys. He, he, look at this. Like a yin and yang type thing. Mm. Yeah. Kendra, this if so you weird. investigate I have this, an idea, but this is Kendra, like... if you investigate this uh, behavior on your end, you will relay a similar behavior. Touching it with your right hand. It will feel burning hot. With your left, bitterly cold. See that, boy? Your right hand, it acts as if to remove all contaminants. From your left, it slowly corrupts and destroys what it touches. What if we, like, touch it all at the same time? Are all three of you would like to touch it at the same time? Let's do it! Oh man, I just got a random idea what this reminds me of, but let's do it. <laughs> I have right. a feeling Actually, I know where this is going, but let's do it. <laughs> I'm kind of As the three of you touch it at the same time, 
a perfect imprint of each of your hands appears. And the box begins to rapidly change shape and envelop all three of your wrists, locking the three of you together. Oh, oh come on! I've been through enough of these past you are two fucking days. Perfect. <laughs> the three of you are perfectly concentrated around the box as it begins to shift and ebb. The spot where each of your hands is touching, Kendra, your spot becomes a violent crimson red. Zubat, yours glows a deep, unsettling purple. Tazel, yours is a light, shining blue. The box will spin rapidly, releasing the three of your wrists, and it pops up into the air. There is a blinding light. All three of you have to shield your eyes. And these two figures, one of crimson red, and one of deep blue, connected is- by a, a tail. Each of them is connected to each other by a tail, which spirals like a DNA helix, and is sort of intrinsically entwined with the other. What the hell is this, a matrix? <laughs> the three of you feel as though if you try to talk, there is no sound. The sound of silence. And all you see is a haze, save for the two figures in perfect clarity. The red one begins to talk. I need all three of you to make a choice. Would you like to listen with your with your ears, your heart, or your mind? Uh, I'd probably go. <laughs> Basil will listen with his ears. Kendra, I'll listen with my heart. <laughs> mind and zoom that boy. You will listen with your mind. Okay. All three of you will hear something a little different. Kazo, listening with your ears, it sounds as though they are reciting a poem in a dark, demented chorus. You hear lines about... You hear the red one say a line about having such a ruby flaming heart and the blue one a cold spirit standing side by side. They laugh at each other and comment about how these opposing sides must eternally abide. Kendra, as you listen with your heart, you hear the red one say something along the lines of, with my eyes eternal, I pity thee, thou art fated, deathless powers war to be. The blue one retorts, not less the martyr of the world than he whose thorn-crowned brow usurps thine tears of thorns. And Zubat Boy, you listen with your mind, and it sounds as if they are having an intimate conversation with one another, where the red one begins, in intimate war to each we impart, from life is pain, from joy is dart, I wound with grief, or death self-allied. And as the two of them speak to the three of you in their own way, they spiral up into the air, and in a secondary flash of light, they are gone along with the box. And the world returns to a understandable form. In each of your hands, there is a key. Hmm. Cool, I hope this is to a new car. Zubat Boy, you have the ability to ride on an eight foot giant snake. Why the fuck want a car? (laughs) (laughs) I want a Zubat Mobile. (laughs) Use your license first, buddy. (laughs) Goddamn advertisements. Yeah, those aren't fun. Uh, I'm going to investigate said key. All right. Kendra, half of your key 
in the back of the key, first of all, in the circular bit of it, there are two gems entwined in a yin yang form. One is a deep cerulean blue, and the other is a ruby red. The key itself is split perfectly down the middle. One side seems to be misty and smoking, as if cold in the form of liquid nitrogen, and the other side seems to be hot and almost smoking and on fire, though it does not feel either of those temperatures to hold. Uh, let's come. Did you guys get a key too? Yeah. What'd yeah. You guys get? Uh, let's compare the keys to see if there's any difference between them. Lock up and like show them to each other. <laughs> I'll show you mine if you show me yours. Okay. Shut the so, fuck up, Tessel. <laughs> God. God. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. So, Tessel, all the the commonality between three of your keys, they are all in the center uh, of the of the circular bit. Have those blue and red gems, but each of the keys will be split perfectly down the middle to reflect the states that you remember the bot. Tazel, half of your key looks like it is made of an aerosol gel, the other a dense, shiny metal. Zubat Boy, half of your key looks like this ebbing goo of purple and black bubbling consistency. The other half looks like the purest, cleanest marble that you've ever seen. Well, this is beyond weird. <laughs> the holding the keys exhibits none of the properties of the box. Okay. What 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 did you what did you guys think this means? Um How did I know. Just had two weird figures like recite poetry. <laughs> Some weird things said, said things and then disappeared. And I had this. But it seems to match yeah. our situations previously. Yeah. Did they say something to you guys that is meaningful as well? Or. Uh, I think so. It wasn't meaningful to me, but. Or at least had some meaning. So, oh, yeah. Out of character, I don't even remember what the hell they said. So, <laughs> I think I'm in the same boat. Out of character, remember. Scott, they mentioned the fact that your parents died. <laughs> yeah, okay, sort of. <laughs> it wasn't intended to quite be that dark, but I might need a recap too. That's fine. Oh, my sleep. Yeah, I, I listening I, back to it later. <laughs> as yeah. soon as, as you soon like as Hunter said like my the, poem, do you like post was, the uh the poems? Uh, yeah, and like I'm going to send each of you the bit that you heard. Oh, yeah, wow. that that's what I was asking for. Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay, just, you already you already did send it. To I me. did for okay. you. I will do that for the other two though. Um. And then Discord or. Yeah, I'm just I'm I have to copy paste the section one at a time. So let me send it. Hunter, these is this is badass. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, what? So, Zubat boy, you heard? Oh, it's already. Good. This bit. Let me see if I can. Uh, yeah, this is you. This is what you heard. Mic off. And then, Tazel, you heard. Did you make these? No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did not. This is a poem by William Russell, George William Russell. Or snippets thereof, a poem by George William Russell. Don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> um. And then, okay, so I gave two of you. Now, what do you guys think? I don't, I don't know what My to God. think. 
And uh, I definitely feel like this has something to do with our Pokemon. Send it directly to At least. Right? I did. Yeah. Each of you directly got the chunk of the bone that you heard. Okay, yep, I got it. I think he's talking to me. Um, but yeah, I definitely feel like um, these keys have to do with, obviously, not only us personally, but our Pokemon. In some way. Um, but I will just leave it at that, and I will put the key into my backpack. <laughs> All right. The key will settle into your backpack with a light clang. I just put it in my pocket. And as for now, it just feels like a key. Uh, it feels like a strange little metal key in your pocket. All right. Um. To the Pokemon. <laughs> I, I like that no one is really talking about what they uh, what they heard though. That's good. <laughs> this is actually really cool. Now that I'm rereading this, oh man. I know. Like this is. I kind of have to process. Um, on our way to the Pokemon, does uh, anyone want to say anything? That was weird. That was yeah. Weird. <laughs> Did you? So, did you? Yeah, you guys heard heard them say things. Yeah, they said something to me. Uh, did, are, are we comfortable in sharing? Or no? <laughs> um, I mean, it means nothing to me. So sure. I can show. I can All right, Zubaka, why you go first then? Since it apparently means nothing to you. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, they told me, life from its pain and every joy a dart, to wound with grief or death the self allied, red life within the spirit crucified, the eyes eternal pity thee, thou art. I don't think it could be about my Zubat because it doesn't have eyes. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> that's a really, that's a really uh, clever, uh, actually, good notation. I actually did not even think about that when I came to these. <laughs> That's pretty good. I just really. Good. That's a good. That's a good hint, though. Yeah. I don't think that doesn't have any eyes. <laughs> 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 Perfect. That's so good, see that boy. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah, you want to go next? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, do bad boy shared what he has heard. Is anyone else going to share what they've heard? Tazzle said he was going to say, oh, share no, his. Saying you can go first if you want. Oh, 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 oh okay. Force me to go. Okay, I'll no, go. go. Um, okay, fine, then go. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever, Kendra, I'll do it. Jesus um, Christ. Who gave thee such a ruby flaming heart and such a pure cold spirit side by side? I know these must eternally abide. An intimate war, and each to each in part. Okay. Um, to me, they said, The eyes eternal pity thee, thou art, Fated with deathless powers at war to be, Not less the martyr of the world than he, Those thorn-crowned brow usurp the dew of tears. These are fantastic. <laughs> Mine's talking about war. Tazzle's kind of is. Yeah, me too. And Zubat Boys is talking about death, but also rebirth in some way. Mine says an intimate war, so it seems to be more of like a family. Family, personal, personal. I mean, what gets more intimate than? Well, okay, never mind. We're not going to continue the sentence. They are all. Um, they are all intricately related to your backstories. It is so yeah. joy to listen to you parse it out. Uh, so we guys head to the store after after we've had this uh, this this wonderful recitation of of poetry. Yeah, it is interesting <laughs> that no one. Uh, it's interesting that none of you have uh, commented on each other. Like, hey, well, nobody heard the same poem. That's fantastic. Uh, let me get the store inventory up. Unless anyone wants to comment about. The fact that uh, it is all different. 
Oh yeah. Uh, uh, the, like two things that kind of like came to mind was when like when I heard red from mine, the gold from uh, Tazzles is like red and gold versions, like a mm. Pokemon. <laughs> It's really <laughs> Mine had a uh, yeah, Ruby Flaming Heart and Pure Cold Spirit. Yeah. Pure Cold. Ruby is also a Pokemon game, so <laughs> it's Pure Cold, not Pure Gold. If you're curious, cold, yeah, Cold Spirit. No, sorry. Okay, so, Ruby. The Ruby, yes, you. DM, Ruby, what yes. does this mean? <laughs> it's a puzzle, goddamn you! <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm kind of getting what it could aim to. This is a curse of DMing uh, with puzzles. So it's either too easy or <laughs> we'll never figure it out. <laughs> did you guys We're going to find any, out. When, when this was sent to you, did any of you have any all caps words? Uh, I mean, uh, like the first letter of each one. Uh, no, mine doesn't spell anything. Mine is T F N W. Mine would be L T R T. We need vowels. <laughs> <laughs> there is there is no clever trickery with the the start of the lines. I will hint you before you go down a rabbit hole there. <laughs> I kind of figured it is it is it is about. We need content. Indiana Jones. <laughs> it is about the content of the of of the passage, not the structure of it. Okay, okay, how about this? Game plan. This is game plan right now. Go to the Pokemon first. Eat all of us buy Pokeballs. Then we'll go to the transport spender, get Tazzle, see if his Pokemon came in from transport. Then we'll go somewhere private and break down each poem piece by piece, line by line. Try and figure it out. Sure. Yeah, that sounds good? boring. <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll just discover it as we go along. <laughs> How about this? We will discuss it while going on to our next location. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, this is this is intended to not be solved today. That is my idea. God damn it! <laughs> I kind of guess that too. Yeah. But you never know. <laughs> Someone is OP. And if one of you if one of you figures it out today, I will be. Flabber shocked and also very pissed off. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's just really investigation check. See if I can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so you can roll a pure intelligence check so that you don't get your uh, investigation bonuses. <laughs> pure intelligence. <laughs> Do you want me to roll pure intelligence to see if there's any commonalities between three all three of you? Can roll pure intelligence if you want to see what your character figures out that you don't. I mean, I got 16, so, uh, 16 oh. intelligence. Yeah. Characters sometimes know things that you do not. Okay. Okay. I thought you said no pluses. Uh, yeah, you're, just your intelligence. You don't get investigation, like, proficiency and stuff, but you can get your intelligence bonus. Oh, okay, yeah. Just a pure representation of how clever... Well, it's not really clever so much as how smart your character is. Clever is more wisdom. Smart is more intelligence. I have basic intelligence. <laughs> Plus, well, that when basic. it comes to puzzle... When it comes to puzzles... <laughs> okay. In this okay, order, Tazzle will realize that uh, each of you got a slightly different passage. Though each of your passages seems to be tangentially related to your person, um, you may not share this tassel, but you you come to the understanding that your passage is about duality of your past, and each of your passages has some representation of duality. Mm -hmm. Zubat boy, you think about your passage for a moment, and you realize that there is a talk of grief and death in your passage and you have some semblance of who it might be referring to or what event in your history it might be referring to. And Ken um, so starting at the top of the turner again, that we all have our assignments. Kendra, are you going to go take this uh, lab assistant assignment? Yeah, yeah, we'll go. All right. As you trot your way off to the lab, 
and you uh, enter sort of like you own the place because you have your little badge to get in and about. The uh, the particular professor looking for help is Professor Aspen. <gasps> yes, my girl. <laughs> and as you approach Professor Asp, as you approach the door, uh, you see you can hear inside. There's the sound of what you almost think is a blowtorch, and you hear the sound of something metal screaming. Lovely. I work my way in there, and I'm just like Aspen. <laughs> And as you open the door, ah. the sound of the blowtorch becomes significantly louder, and you see this little magnemite in the corner just cowering, as she see appears to be holding a much larger magnet and a blowtorch, which is currently lit. This lady, so and she as she turns and she goes, oh, ah, hello! And, and she turns around to look at you without turning the blowtorch off and catches the table next to her on fire. She's like, hi! I'll go, I'll go and help her put it out. <laughs> Just starts smack the table with my bare hands. Just, like, it's okay. Puts the puts the puts the little flame out. She does extinguish the torch at this point, and she lifts the little safety goggles up. She says, Hi, how can I help you? I have your post, my friend. I am here to assist. My post. Post. Am I building a fence? Job board. Am I building a oh, oh, job. Oh, 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 oh. oh. Post. Yeah, the job board I, post that you I had. I thought you meant like like post post. Like I I ordered some lumber. Uh, anyway, and um, moving on from that. Um, what was the job post about? Uh, it just says you needed some help doing some dangerous work. Oh yeah, yeah that yeah that one. Uh, okay. How confident are you? You can hold a magnemite still, and how fireproof do you think you are? Uh, very and yes. <laughs> okay. Great. I am trying to run an experiment, which is to say that if I significantly empower the electromagnetic impulses coming from a magnemite, will it be able to evolve faster? But this little one seems very objective to me welding a stronger magnet onto him. Mm. Well, this All right. Uh, Kendra will turn to Dave, and she will ask him if he can hold the magnemite still. Have Dave make a... Uh, we're going to have them do a... a um, what was it called? A contested intelligence check. Intelligence. It is contested. Uh, which means I have to roll a d20 minus one for me. Oh, fuck's sake. <laughs> fuck's sake. <laughs> Dave... Dave attempts to reach out and psychically hold the magnemite, but its own sort of EMF waves just interrupt his ability to grab it, and it just sort of vibrates out. And he kind of looks back at you and he shakes his head, no, I can't. Well, looks like we're doing this the hard way. <laughs> um, actually, do you have a PC here, by chance? Ah. Uh... Mm, ah, PC. Ah, she goes over and she walks over to the re uh, the desk, which is about at like chest height. It's like kind of a standing desk, but it seems like the arm is broken, so it can't go all the way up. And she just kind of swipes a bunch of papers off of a keyboard. And goes, aha, yeah. Uh, okay, Dave, pardon me. <laughs> and I'm going to take out experiment sixty six. As experiment sixty six hits his. Rusty old ass. He's slow, but he's old and wise, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Hey, buddy. Mm -hmm. um, I was wondering if you could uh, assist me and my friend Aspen here with a little experiment. Mm -hmm. Um... Aspen, what exactly are you trying to do? <laughs> uh, forcible evolution experiment. Experiment 66. Are you okay with this? <laughs> I'll take that as a yes. Just don't move. <laughs> <laughs> take it away, Aspen. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> 
She immediately just ignites the blowtorch and flicks her uh, little glasses down. She kind of flicks one of her glass eyes up a little bit and yells to you over the sound of the torch. You probably want to do a safety squint. I'm good. <laughs> I've seen hotter <laughs> and brighter. As you see, <laughs> she, for a moment, she extends her torch. She goes, those are very rude things to say about me. <laughs> The fucking flame aspen. <laughs> oh, 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 right. Yeah. Oh, of course. No. Mm. <laughs> As she reignites the torch. As she approaches 66, he sees the flame coming up and he goes, mm. and he starts buzzing around the room. <laughs> you I will just recall him into his Pokeball and pop him out right next to me. And I will hold his little magnet hand and be like, it's okay. I won't <laughs> let him. <laughs> As you see part of his chassis really... start to melt, you can see Professor Aspen attach the magnet and then let go. And as you hear, it's just go, <laughs> and you see the other magnemite from across the room I will... just get yoinked. And you see the the other magnemite from across the room just seems to get sucked over and like attached to the back of this experiment sixty six. They seem to be sort of stuck together for a moment. Um, Aspen. Um, <laughs> Uh, 66, are you okay? Uh, I'll take that as a no. Uh, Aspen, I don't think your experiment's working. Um, I think it's working yeah. quite well. They're stuck together. What do you mean? What do you, what, what, so? So that's how these things evolve, dear. They stick together. Okay. Although I, needed, although I probably could have used one more of them to make this work really well. Hmm. You knew you needed three of them, and you wanted to do the experiment anyway. This is. Yeah, well, that's why it was an experiment. You know. Do you have a third? This is. Ah, no. <sighs> okay, You're let's ready? unstick them. Ah, uh, yeah. Let's unstick them. Right. You don't know how to unstick them, do you? I didn't say that. I don't know how to unstick them. Flare! <laughs> Kendra will pick Flare up. And um, she will look at Experiment 626 very sorrily. <laughs> She's just like, don't worry, buddy, we're gonna unstick you. Give us a quick second, okay? Um, and I'll basically use Flare like she did her blowtorch. <laughs> <laughs> And un un unstick the magnet that she placed on six two six. Okay, give it a shot. Flare roll. Flare can roll the damage of one of their fire moves. Okay, dokie. Uh, one d six plus four. Is it possible that you could just reverse her polarity? Maybe. If Kendra thinks of such a thing. It's pretty good. Oh, god damn it. Hold on. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm currently attempting to uh, make a asset here. Uh, as Flare unleashes a significant fire attack, you can see the magnet starts to melt off the back of Experiment 626. And as it melts off the back of him, uh, you see it fall to the floor. And the two of them do not separate. Well, shit. This is... As they appear to be orbiting one another. <laughs> Oh, man. I was going to say, can you melt them uh, down and create one giant main weight? No, I'm not doing that! <laughs> and uh, as they 
sort of orbit around one another. You see this flash there of light as the magnet falls away. And experiment 66 is going to disappear. <laughs> and from the result, what? They appear to have been permanently bound to one another. 626, you have a friend. Oh, I'm sorry. You're probably very upset with me. How about this? Tell you what. Make it up to you. Help you take the rest off. Uh, Kendra. Experiment 626 from being subjected to this experiment is going to become level 5. Oh, damn! <laughs> oh my God. Uh, I will walk up to 66 and I will pat both of their heads and be like, I am very proud of you <laughs> for putting up with me and my stupidity. That's Thank you. <laughs> he went from level 2 to 5! Oh, God, are you kidding me? I'm going to need you to three. I need three con things. How do I do that? You roll me a d20 plus con three times. So just roll me three d20s and put the plus con uh, whatever it is on the end, and we'll add it. Three d20s. Or not d20. No, sorry, not d20s. Uh, what's his? Sorry, what's his hit die? Hold on. Three um, d6. That's the one. I was gonna say three D twenties does not sound right, but I'll take it. That is, that is not right. Fourteen plus nine is twenty one additional HP. Holy so he now has forty three HP. That's awesome. And he has uh, fifteen AC as a note. Fifteen AC. Wow, he's he is now oh, a weird damn. hybrid of two magnemites fused together. And uh, Professor Aspen goes, massive success. Yeah, uh, I would say so. Good job, Aspen. Thank you, thank you. And uh, for donating uh, your friendly little magma mite and subjecting him to my experiments, uh, this is for you, dear. And she will hand you a crisp roll me a d10 amount of money. Okay. My actual name... <laughs> Natural ten. A crisp five hundred poke dollars. Sweet. Uh, while I'm here, Aspen, can you take a look at something for me? Since you are the, you know, uh, in town pokeball or metal expert. Sure. <laughs> so I will go to the PC. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna put flare away, just temporarily. Off. Uh, and I'm gonna pull out. Sixty-six is gonna make that noise every once in a while. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out Vulcan. Okay. Um, and I'm gonna show her his Pokeball. You and how it is black entirely. You are going to notice that the floor underneath poor Vulcan is going to like begin to liquefy at his presence. Noticing this, I'm just going to put him back in his ball. <laughs> and there is now a warped, partially melted stone tile where you threw him out. Eh, it gives him character. <laughs> she goes, huh. I am going to eat shit on that so hard. All right. Sorry. Anyway. <laughs> what are we looking at? Uh, this is Volcan's Pokeball. Um, Good God, what did you uh, do? Dunk it in lava? Pretty much, yeah. That's what um, that's what he's made out of. Um, oh my goodness! I was surprised that this thing survived. Um, the other ones did not. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, well, let's see. Hmm. Well, my answer for you, dear, is miraculously. You have managed to char the entirety of the shell, but you have not damaged the 
hinge or the capture disc? This is so here. there's so there's nothing special about it. Um, it's special that it works. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to tell you. Uh, hmm. you burned it good. Um, maybe he likes it. I don't know. Do you know him better than me? Yeah, I just didn't know if I don't know. This sounds stupid, but there's no fire type Pokeball out there, so I was wondering if I stumbled across something. So, certainly <laughs> true. Pokeballs I mean, what, can be very well customized. Yeah, but like, what what fire type Pokeball is out there? Well, That's specifically what for is, fire types. What is sold on the mass market? The answer is nothing. What can exactly. you make? <laughs> what can you make if you're terribly clever? Quite a bit. Fair enough. <laughs> you may have done something terribly clever. We will not know until you interact with your melty little friends some more. Mm. Perhaps Fair you enough. have discovered something. I can't tell you. I've never dunked one of my Pokeballs in lava. They're expensive. But now I might. <laughs> well, uh, if you would like to test that, <laughs> I can bring out my fiery little friend. <laughs> okay, but make sure he's on the same tile. I don't want to replace more than one. You got it. I will she will, bring him out. before you even throw him out, she will have a pair of tongs in her hand with a Pokeball. She goes, all right, Ali, you. And she dunks. The tongs begin to melt. But she does recover from the warped and bent tongs a charred Pokeball. She goes, huh, I broke it. <laughs> well, shit. <laughs> um, save for sacrificing several thousand Poke dollars worth of equipment, which my boss is probably going to have a conniption about. Um, how did you just tell me how this affects him in the future? Why don't you get back to me with some data and some scientist? Okay, I will let you know, Aspen. If it affects him at all, let me know. Well, do go, friend. Uh, is there anything else that uh, is needed while I am here? Um, I posted Besides... for that. Yeah. <laughs> you need help. <laughs> uh, uh, no, 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 Pat. You kind of resolved my experiment remarkably, in fact. Um, he seems quite happy, like, partially evolved. Partially. Yeah. Uh, do you have a way to help get the rest off of 626? <laughs> uh, yeah. An I older do. model. I do, actually. This is, uh, try this. And she hands you a metal wire brush. Perfect. Uh, I will head over and I will start scrubbing, scrubbing 626 down. Okay. Do you got WD-40? <laughs> My god. She has the Pokemon equivalent of WD-40. Sweet. <laughs> Whatever that may be. Um, Tazzle, mm -hmm. heading over to you, sir. You arrive at one of the training fields to see a bunch of ten, nine and ten year old boys in like mini ranger uniforms. And the lesson that they are asking to teach is to do with tracking. And it is identifying the difference between different sets of footprints. The instructors have laid out a couple of calcified examples in display cases. And what they want is someone to walk each kid through it and see if they can get them to identify which species is which. Okay. I'll do it. All right. So the first kid is going to walk up with their little uh, with their little set of footprints. And they're going to look a bit like something you have seen in the wild before, something you sort of specialize in. It is a set of three little prongs with little bitty marks a little bit away. I know this one, of course. 
the second set of footprints much more mundane in nature is that of a little paw Tazzle, you can roll me nature to determine which is which, what species they belong to. <laughs> this is a very important role, Tazel. It depends it predicates on you getting paid or not. Okay. Tazel, you identify the one on the left as a Pidgey and the one on the left is a Rattata. Now you have to guide the child into understanding that. Pidgey and Rattata? <laughs> yes. Or the left is a Pidgey and the right is a Rattata. Rattata Tata. Rattata Tata, yes. Alright. We have to track these? We've tracked these, right? You have to teach them how to tell the difference between these two paws when it is in the ground. They have the example tracks, and then they have these little tracks simulated on the ground that are sort of intertwining one with another, and you have to teach the kid to be able to follow the two separately. Okay. Hmm. Um, I guess I can try to use. Obviously, Chloe's not the same bird, but I can kind of show how you can kind of tell where they go, how they move. Yeah. Maybe if they take off, if they land. Do you want to talk? You want to talk through it, or you want to use a skill, a skill check? check? I'll allow I'll either. Do, I'll do a skill check. What skill do you want to try? <clears throat> um. I'll say um, perception work. No, that would be more of it. If it's teaching, it would be more survival, I guess. What do you want to try? Perception would be my best, but I feel like survival would be. Try either. Roll, roll what you feel like is most... Uh... survival just for the shits even though it's a little less let's see all right Still good. Tazzle, you expertly show though the child retains not as much as you can teach you can expertly show if there were 20 sets of these tracks on the ground you'd be able to follow each individual you show how to tell that they move a little differently than one another you show how to tell that they on the bird side kind of hop about and on the rattata side they kind of scurry so the paws are closer together than each of the little claw prints you show how you can sort of track what makes sense to move as an individual based on what was going on in the environment you just ramble this lecture at the end the kids are all a little starry-eyed but the instructors are very impressed and i'll have shown them like I mean, if I have my Pokemon with me, I'll kind of show them some, like, examples. Like, if birds tick off, if you lose a track on the bird, look up. <laughs> look under the tree. They could have taken off or something. Yeah. You know, the whole deal. A little bit of extra advice goes pretty well appreciated. And after you give this lecture, the uh, the other instructors will come to you and be like, yeah, that's pretty good. You, you know your stuff. How come I haven't seen you around? I'm actually kind of kind of been training in my own sort of give or take like an apprentice sort of been only like a couple like a year or so in it but adventuring at the same time working with people working with other rangers as i continue gotcha insight learning love it well for uh you know for helping teach the class uh you look like a pretty qualified ranger kind of knew your stuff so roll me a d10 tuzzle Watch this be a natural one. I will shit. <laughs> a 
three. <laughs> even, even he goes, well, here's your, here's your cut of the teaching commission, man. And I'll hand you uh, 300 polka dollars. I say, hey, you got a Porygon pager? I do. I finally do, yes. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I see it for a minute? Sure. And I'll hand it over. They will type in a number, a sort of address. You go, this here's uh, this is for our boss for the, for the area. His name is Ranger Speck. You can get a hold of him when you want to now. Speck. All righty. Add that to my list. Ranger Speck. S P E C. Mm hmm. Okay. Boss. Ranger. Ranger boss. Yeah, he's a senior. They call him Senior Ranger. Senior Ranger, okay, fantastic. fantastic. There are uh, from from the Pokemon from the Pokemon Ranger games. There are there are ranks, mm. and I will I will relay them to you if you do not recall what they are. I I, yeah, I don't know. I never got to play it. I wish I did now. I, it's been ages since I played one. Okay. I will tell you that there are several uh, ranks there of Pokemon Ranger. Um, the best of the best Rangers are called the Top Rangers. Uh, but they are a numeric system. It is a 1 through 10. As you would be considered ranger. a 1 at the moment. A Top Ranger would be a 10. Okay. So Ranger top specs. and bottom Rangers? Yep, pretty much. Uh, Ranger spec would be considered a six. Uh, okay. All right. Just to give you an understanding of uh, seniority here. Uh, and with that resolution complete and then something else, Zubat Boy. Yes. You head down to the gym. You arrive at the front gate. And you are at the uh, reception office. What would you like to say? I'm here to see about the bounty. Oh, well, okay. Yeah, you're quite young for a bounty hunter, but I'll... Uh... Sure, I guess there's no harm in giving you the information. Um, just don't do anything reckless, okay? She will hand you over a packet of information. The man is wanted because he somehow, some way, broke into the gym after hours and has stolen some of the training equipment that Rudy uses to train his personal Pokemon. He is wanted in part for the crime, but also in part because they need to know how he got into Rudy, Rudy's personal room because there's other things he could have stolen in there that would not be quite so harmless. And they need to know that he is not working for someone who is going to attempt to do such things. They want information on who it was and where they are or how they did it are all payable uh, payable to the, the reward. If you get the man to come in and, and confess, that will be the full reward. Okie dokie. What's your plan, Zubat boy? And do you want the other two's help? Want the other what? Do you want either of your compatriots' help with this task, or what's your plan? I don't like splitting money. So what's your plan? <laughs> Solo Batman. Uh, was there anything potentially... They left behind. Where did he break in to? We saw evidence that he had. He left behind evidence of the dust that most miners carry on them after a long day. Interesting. Uh, I'm going to throw out some viper. Okay. Because uh, snakes are very good at tracking my scent. As Viper hits the field, what is it you ask them to do? Viper, I need to find out 
Uh, whatever broke in here, where did it go? <laughs> Viper can make a perception check. Uh, actually, not sure what its perception is. Uh, By default, a flat d20. Though, in this particular case, it is going to be a flat d20. We'll give you advantage for the sake of tracking by scent. <laughs> why is this thing pers why is this thing proficient in deception? Intimidation I get, but deception. Snake. No idea. Snake is good at lying, apparently. Or hiding. <laughs> It's probably more camouflage than... I just throw in twice. You would think that would be stealth, though. Uh, yeah. I said advantage, so that's two d20s. Oh, if it were about hiding, I would expect proficiency in stealth. This thing's just straight up good at lying. Um, you can't see me. Exactly. <laughs> 16. Okay. So Viper is going to start slinking away toward the residential district in town. All right, I'll follow along. In particular, it leads you to 2nd Street. Though it, the trail seems to stop here in this row of three houses. A row of three houses. Mm -hmm. He knows it's this street. He doesn't know which of the three. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna go out the houses, uh, just like maybe just peeking the windows. Uh, preferably not from the street. Like, do, do they get like out uh in between backyards, whatever? Okay. Most of the curtains appear to be closed. So there's not much you can see alongside the fact that a lot of the houses are raised a bit off the ground and you are a young boy, so you are slightly short. But you get to you see that in all three of them, at least somebody is home. In one case, the house all the way at the end, there is somebody in the backyard working on something. Okay, uh, can I get a perception check on the person who is working? Yeah. Uh, I'll do the receiving here. Uh, Kendra, at this point, by the way, you have scrubbed 626 to the point where you cannot tell him and the one bonded to him apart. Sweet. <laughs> yes. They are shiny. Well, they are both 626 now. They are technically one mind at this point. Uh, 626 version 2. There you go, 66v2. Neither of them, neither of them is. There you go. Neither of them is particularly uh, standoff from the other. You can kind of tell which was the original 626 just because of the scratch marks that kind of leaves behind in the in the shiny pelt or shiny surface. I mean to say, but um, they are very similar looking now. He is no longer a rusty mess. Uh, I will ask him how he feels. Nah. If he feels um, uh, faster than he was before. Uh, can you, can you, are you, can you like prove it now? <laughs> he will unleash a Thundershock of level five strength versus his previous level of strength. <laughs> Yeah, that that'll do it. You're a lot stronger, <laughs> and I'm sure you feel better now that you got all that rust off. <laughs> mm. Uh, I will place him. I can't place him or delete him. Well, that um, you need you need a fresh token. Yeah, I I can't put. Uh, there you go. I will put him back in his post. Mm. Mm. Go over to the PC. All right. So, is like my turnover or what? No, I just 
I just wanted to move these two on to whatever they were doing next because your your situation is going to take a few minutes. Uh, I'm also getting from my table what 14 perception is going to buy you from this person because I didn't have that actually available. Uh, this particular individual, Zubat Boy, now that I have his table in front of me, he looks like a pretty uh, common sight for working in these mines. Looks like he had a either an overnight or an early morning shift that he is on brick or fully out of. He's got a sawhorse set up in the backyard. Seems to be popping away at some sort of lumber, trying to build. You can't quite tell what, but he's sawing away at some 4 by 4 posts, trying to cut them to uh, almost all the exact same length. He seems to have a stack of finished and unfinished ones. The man himself is grizzled, very poorly shaven, a little bit dirty from work, wearing his standard work overalls. Seems to be a male in his late 30s. Okay. Uh, I'm going to have my Civ Viper uh, restrain him. So Viper, make for me a contested strength check as you grapple with an adult man. Though it is a strength for you at advantage because you have surprised him. Uh... And you only have to be to seven. So 2d20 uh, plus the Viper strength. Okay. Tazzle, by the way, at this point on your Porygon pager, Ooh. you see a message from Spec that goes, hey kid, thanks for helping teach. Let me know if you need anything when you're in the area. Spec. Oh, cool. Tazzle's definitely happy about that. Yeah. 20. So Viper coils three or four times around this man, preventing him from moving at all. His legs go stiff, his arms are tied to his torso. He falls over, unable to support himself. You see Sir Viper ready to sink fangs into his neck. Awesome. <laughs> the man uh, sees what's around him, and he begins to scream into the house, Boy! Boy, get the shotgun! Boy! Uh-oh. Okay, then. That escalated quickly. I know how you, feel. you hear this gruntled teenager, probably a little bit younger than you, maybe not even quite a teenager, preteen. It's got the changing voice of a 12-year-old boy. It's like I can't, I can't find it. Bart. I say, shut the hell up! I just want to ask you some questions. What the? Who the fuck do you think you are? Trespasser and an attacker. Get the police, boy. Get the police. It's like I would do I anything if I were you. <laughs> I am the police. <laughs> I am the police. <laughs> Son, you might have me restrained, but you got about, well, I don't know how long you got before that boy figures shit out, but you got about half hour at most before that boy figures shit out. Half hour? <laughs> Why did you break into the gym? I have no idea what you're talking about. How dare you accuse me of that? I can't wait to see you rot in jail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can't. I roll intimidation. Absolutely. You may roll at advantage because you have a sniper with you. Who is proficient in such things? I'm also proficient in intimidation. Well, all the more reason for the uh, advantage. Boy! Boy, I swear to God, if I die to this snake, I'm going to haunt you! 
Uh, I'm going to say that... The debris left at the scene of the crime was of a, that of a minor, and you know. Where's uh? Where's your intimidation check? Yeah, I'm just explaining what I'm doing. Oh, okay. And that my viper led it here. And uh, tell me what uh? Yeah, but, yeah, just tell me or else, you know. Well, let's see. Let's see the let's see the check. Let's see how he reacts based on your level of intimidation. Okay, you intimidate to a seventeen. Okay. Nice. And he goes, boy. I don't know how I break this to you. You're pretty fucking stupid. Ninety-five percent of this town works in that mine. Dust from the mine means about as much as mosquitoes in the summer. Ain't fucking mean nothing. Blue on black out here. The whole fucking town was dusty. I think your name's Dusty. And if you're a psychopathic snake like you here, I don't know what the fuck to tell you. I know you're going to jail. This guy sounds like an asshole. Be the one I <laughs> What is it with you and I for me? It's the greatest <laughs> fucking ability ever. <laughs> Can I roll uh, to see whether he's telling the truth? Sure. Perception? Insight. Insight? Mm-hmm. Okay, so it was D20 plus one. Do well with fucking hyper beam. It'd be insane. Could not tell. Uh, you see... You can't tell for sure, but you see no real... You see no real motivation for him to lie to you in his current situation? Uh, okay. At least you know just look for truth. Do you know who would in the area that would do that? Some fucking scumbag like you. <laughs> I love this guy. <laughs> There is a reward. I could cut you in if you help me. Now you're speaking my fucking language. Get this snake off me. All right. So if I ever release him. The man will uh, stand up and sort of stretch out. He goes, boy, you're fucking grounded. Don't bother with the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> you hear this sad kid go, oh, man. He goes, I know that that man at the end of the street, right by the main road, he's a sketchy man. He loves to plot to make money beyond his station. He's been a little snitch to all kinds of managers in his day. If anybody was willing to steal something for a buck, there's that motherfucker down there. Okay, sir. Thank you. I appreciate it. You owe me, kid. I will call the cops. All right. I'll be back. Good. Bonnie! Bonnie, bring me the bigger saw. I'm pissed. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, I'm going to head to the uh, uh, person's house that he... All right. As you arrive at this house, all of the windows have their shades shut. And though you can tell by being clever that there is a light on and at least somebody is in there doing something, they seem to have the door locked and all of the shades closed. Hmm. Hey, come. You want to uh, uh, ooze into the door and uh, unlock it? No. Oh. Oh. You see, this dude turn into a thin layer of mush and begin to muck his way under the door. Make an intelligence check for Kum. See if he can figure out how to unlock the door. 
<laughs> this, uh, this isn't gonna go well. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh. not bad. He's like reaching up to try and get to the locker. You hear him eventually just like rip a piece of himself off and go and just throws it at the lock and you see the keyhole just dissolve. <laughs> I guess that works. I guess I go in. Alright. You head inside. It's dark. And very poorly cleaned in here. Oh, well, come will be happy. The only pers- the only evidence of someone being here is at the very end of the main hallway. There is one room with the door cracked open and a light on. All right. Uh, I'm going to use... My stealth. I'm going to be a sneaky boy. Okay. Maybe a stealth check. Creep up to the doors. Look through the crack. I'm looking for a stealth check. Do that, boy. 19 good? Uh, uh, let's see. 19. Yeah, you are able to get right up to the door without drawing the attention. I'm assuming putting some viper away because otherwise they will not. But you will make it right up to the door without drawing the attention of anybody that may or may not be inside. And you are able to peek into the cracked door, realizing that whoever was here is no longer here and they left in a hurry. Everything they were doing is still currently sitting on the table. Okay, uh, I wanted to investigate what they were doing. Okay. You see that there is a set of documents pertaining to a brand new piece of training equipment and how it can be used. And you see that there is a copy of an invoice for Rudy purchasing such a thing. And you see evidence of a briefcase with a protective foam and a cutout designed to hold something very carefully. And the thing inside is missing. Okay, then. What's your plan? Also, at this point, Kendra, I'm assuming you have left the lab and are wandering to find your compatriots, and Tazzle, you are wandering about the uh, training grounds, just observing all of the different uh, young ranger drills, reminiscing. Yeah, Yeah, pretty much. Exactly. Uh, I want to see if I can find something that belongs to the perps. But, uh, I'm going to say just about everything in this room belongs to whoever owns this house. Okay, then. Viper, Viper you're coming back out. I need you to uh, see if you can find this particular scent. Particular scent of this person again. As you ask Survivor to smell around, they are accosted by the fact that everything here smells the same and everything here smells very strongly. Their, their senses seem very overwhelmed. So are you saying it can't or... I'm saying there's not much it can gleam other than everything here smells like whatever the hell this person smells like. And it is such a strong smell that they can't do much with it. They're just uncomfortable sniffing it too much. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if I could wait and set up an ambush. You put the door. Your compatriots are probably going to wonder where you are if you wait too long, but you could. I'll, I'll wait by the door, I think. You know, just to... All right. You're going to wait and ambush. 
So while Zubat Boy is waiting, because this is going to take some time, Kendra and Tazel, would you two be looking to find each other, having completed your jobs, or what would you like to be up to? Let's start with you, Kendra. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'd be looking for the other two. Yeah, okay. Definitely. I'm going to say the two of you will probably find one another as you are both kind of hanging around the central town. The uh, museum and the training fields aren't that far from each other. So as you guys kind of wander and think about, we'll say you run into each other just outside the gym by the training fields across, you know, in between the museum and the training field street. See, that boy is not here, but you two have run into each other. What is the plan? What do you guys like to do? Um, do you know where that little brat went? Uh, no, he's probably on a vigilante run. Well, if he's not back then now, probably a lot later. I don't think we were told, right? At all. No. You guys were there when he took the job, you know, roughly. Yeah. You know the de- you know the only detail you guys know about his job is it said go talk to the receptionist. The rat, let's go there. So we so we can either do that or I can help you train for gym battle maybe match. Oh. Mm. That's a good idea too. Good job. Yep, I got you, bro. <laughs> Want to train? Yeah, sure. I will let you choose any Pokemon that I battle with for you to battle with. Wow. Shoot a 1v1, you pick. Um, let's see. And that could be any of my Pokemon. Or you can pick a particular type of Pokemon, and I can go from there, based on what you would like to train again. Uh, let's do... Um, let's give Drew Greywind a try. Greywind? Okay. There. What do you want to go with? Who did you want to, uh, what type of Pokemon are you looking to fight or train Green Wind with? Um... Kendra. Yes? As you talk about who would you like to train with and who would you like to fight with, make a perception check. Okay. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I'm still apparently very distraught from last okay. evening. <laughs> All right. You do not hear the sound of this thing nearby. And as it notices you do not hear, it simply approaches you. <laughs> and you hear a hissing. Oh shit. I'm gonna turn around being like, what the fuck? And I'm immediately gonna be like, hey! <laughs> Just massive smile on my face. <laughs> Cha. I'm gonna approach him and be like, how how are you doing? <laughs> I'll give him a- Both, uh, all of the injuries you remember him having appear to be healed. You notice he's a little bit smaller than he was before. He's like the size of a proper adult Arbok at this point. All of the poison seeming to have been expunged from his body. He's holding the Pokeball you gave him. Uh, I'm going to do like a how to train your dragon moment. <laughs> Hunter. I'm going to walk up and put the hand on the snoot. Yeah. But I'm not going to touch him because I know that made him uncomfortable last time. All right. You just I will let him hand. make I will let him make the choice. All right. You offer him your hand and he moves his tail around to you and hands you the Pokeball that he was given and he boops his own snoot with it. <laughs> What a 
But it asks your it asks now for your Pokeballs to make a choice. I'm gonna keep him. I'm gonna keep him with me. I'll sh I'll send um, Dave back because I switched everyone out in the lab. I will I will keep him with me. All right. Hmm. Say hello to a level five Arbok. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. That's like <laughs> that's like six seven feet tall. <laughs> yeah, he sta he stands. He stands a good. He stands a good. Six or seven feet tall. Holy yes, this one has been a this one has been a month coming or something. Yeah, it's been a while. This one's been a wait, a waiting. This is a this has been a waiting game on this one. Uh, so you throw him back out. You have uh, you have gained yourself a level five armor that will allow you to redeploy, so you can see some more information about him. Um, he has. A couple things I need to tell you about him. Uh, he has the ability Intimidate. For one okay. thing. Uh, I'm saying he very intentionally. He also has... A nature... What's his, what's, his, what's his nature? His nature is 10. His nature is stubborn, which gives him plus 2 constitution, minus 2 wisdom. That's very fitting. Yeah. He was very stubborn in the beginning. Also, he's like a massive form of his kind. So he's much larger than he may ought to be, yes. Uh due to the meddling of Team Void. But the big boy has returned. He has made his decision. He is now yours. He looks over at Greywind, he looks over at you, he's like, Yeah, wanna do it? <laughs> oh, God. Kendra, you That's make two. Kendra, you may choose my two of his moves, but you should know two of his moves have already been decided. Yeah, Fire Fang. He knows Fire Fang and he knows Ice Fang. I remember that one. The other two of his moves are yours to choose. Uh, Hunter, if you could please reveal his name, that would be fantastic. <laughs> he is the king. He's the king. Yes. <laughs> this concludes a, a storyline that began. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy for my boy. That's pretty fantastic, actually. I will turn to Tazzle, and I'll be like, so, my friend. <laughs> we'll fight. <laughs> right. Kind of rub his hands together and be like, all right, let's do it. Let's do it. You won't do it. Oh God! Is it gonna be Graywin be king? This this is not a fair fight. <laughs> Definitely not. It's not a fair fight, and King knows that he feels bad. He's like, ah. I know Graywin does have some really low AC. I can't wait till he gets my Diana though. I think he gets like three more AC. He goes I can't remember. The uh... Either way. The level five boy, you have you have options on what he can know. He basically just knows a lot of ways of biting things, but he can also know rap. Yeah. Um. Rap. When Pajina gets into a rap, he can have a lot of bite moves too, and they can be the bite brothers. The bite brothers. I have one that bites, one that punches. It would be fantastic. And if you don't know what intimidate means, um, his ability. Um, once per short rest, you can make somebody roll at disadvantage on their attack. Um, so who's fighting who here? What do we set up? Uh, I'm just filling everything in. Just finish our stuff first. All right, great win, be king. So be it. Uh, I don't have to fight with King, but that is up to you, my friend. Oh, it does not have to be King, though. <laughs> it does not have to be. Do whichever you choose. Flair is kind of the only fair fight, right? <laughs> Dude, I said you could choose. It's up to you, and it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Is Fister actually here? Yeah. yeah, I can do Fister. Do Fister. All right, Fister, the ever, uh, ever loving 
Mister. Is, is just going to Mr. pop Mr. the ever loving Mister. I'm just a nice. hunter. Hunter. Mm -hmm. Pause. Time out. Mm -hmm. T. Mm -hmm. How big is King? <laughs> we have I'll established. Be. We've established this is an eight foot tall snake, <laughs> right? How thick uh, is he? <laughs> uh, well, do you see where this, I'm going with this? Well, let's put this in perspective. <laughs> an average, an average arbok is an eleven and a half foot, hundred and fifty pound snake. He's bigger than that. <laughs> King is closer to a fifteen foot, two hundred pound snake. Is he rideable? <laughs> uh, technically, sure. Yes! <laughs> is is it worth ride. riding him? I'll let you decide. He's not faster than you are, but... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you never know if I get incredible. <laughs> he, he can carry you, yes, but he's not any faster than you are. <laughs> 30 foot walking. Fair enough. <laughs> You you could probably you could probably hang on to his his frill if you wanted to, or just like stand on him like a fucking. <gasps> oh no, King's moves are OP. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's two D eight um, plus his move for most of his stuff. Oh. Okay. Um, boy. Initiative. Initiative. It's a. Uh, <laughs> All right, well, Seems don't bother. 5% <laughs> <laughs> chance. 5% chance, Graywin. Let's Seems see it. Right. <laughs> Natural one. <laughs> we know who's going first. Um, all right. You guys, for a moment, let's let's address Zubat Boy uh, yeah, as we have set this him. combat up. Zubat Boy, you stake the place out for what I'm going to say is the better part of a couple hours. After about two hours of waiting, nobody has yet showed up. Are you interested in continuing waiting, or you do not think they're coming back? Yeah, I'll keep waiting. Uh, there are also vipers by the door, lying in wait. Okay. After a, another hour or so, it is, and at this point, even with your patience, you may be getting bored. Uh, you hear the door start to creak open and you see somebody kind of like slowly make their way in. What are you going to do? Survivor, get him! <laughs> Survivor, make me a contested strength check to grapple this person. Ad advantage? Yes. You have to be a Stefan. Looks like one's a 19. Yep. 19 is bigger than 7. Yeah, so Viper successfully grapples on to whoever this is and pins them much like they did before. And you hear the cry of a rather authoritative woman. Just unhand me! You, uh, how dare you! I knew you were guilty. Zubat boy, as you take a closer look, Survivor has constricted an officer duty. <laughs> Survivor release. You better have a good explanation for that. I was following up on a bounty. I uh. The trail led me here. There's a invoice for the parts from Rudy's gym and a, a case for the device, which appears to be missing. That I was is, waiting in ambush for the perp. That is an awful lot of evidence. Indeed. Uh, I came here looking for the suspect. Uh, in fact... But also for you, uh, we got a call from an anonymous neighbor that said a, a, a child entered this dormitory uh, several hours ago and has not emerged. We were getting ready to stake this guy for a much more serious charge. 
but unfortunately our sources say he may have fled the city I thought because you were still in here we, we were wrong and he was hiding out he captured you to prevent uh, being caught so I came here to investigate so I will say you did a great job in your investigation kid because well we didn't know about this house until now that's an awful lot of evidence so uh, although the perp seems to no longer be in the city and therefore out of my jurisdiction, you are owed a significant portion of the reward for your work. Though I will say I should put you in jail for assaulting an officer and close another city. But instead of putting you in jail, I will reward you for your excellent bounty work. Thank and, uh, you. Do you know what city he may have fled to? Because I'll probably be <laughs> moving on myself. I I have a lead. It's not a very good lead, but I have a lead. Uh, apparently, this dude moved on to sell to the scumbags up in Eterna City. Which is where I think we're going. <laughs> Next town to the north. If you're uh, not sure where that's at, kid. All right. Uh, Zubat, wait, roll me a d4. Uh, four times 500. She owes you 2,000 polka dollars. Sweet. She goes, uh, nice work, kid. You're, uh, you're always welcome to pick up a uh, investigations in my jurisdiction. But uh, if you constrict me again, I'll have you arrested. I didn't know it was you. <laughs> uh, by the way, would there be a convenient way for me to get a hold of you? Uh, or uh, Any police station. We, we all have uh, intercommunication. Okay, cool. But like walkie-talkie or Radio. Nothing, I can, nothing I can hand out to a citizen. Sorry, but if you ask for if you ask for uh, Officer Judy of Orboro at any at any station, they'll get you to me. Okay. And if I if I know it's a phone call, I'll, I'll make sure I pick up if I know it's coming from you. All right. Well, thanks. Yeah. Good work, kid. Good work, kid. Yeah, good evening. Or afternoon? I don't know what time You're, it is. Okay. At this point, it is it is early evening for you. Uh, as you've been, oh. you've been at this you've been at this for a while. So I'm I'm gonna go back to the guy who gave me the uh, tip. Uh huh. Who is actually still outside? Now you see his timid, mildly upset teenage boy uh, son out with him. He's like, oh man. Making him hold up a piece. Of, you can see he's making him hold up a piece of wood on the other side, acting like a acting like a sort of pseudo sawhorse. Like, don't shake it. Hello again, good sir. Oh, you're back. Yeah, uh, I, I get a reward for uh, information regarding the, su the the suspect, and as I agreed, uh, I'll cut you in. Uh, how's five hundred sound? Huh. good to me, lad. Good to me. All right. He accepts your 500 graciously. He, uh, in a moment of softness, you see he splits it up. He takes two of the bills off and he says, there's your allowance, boy. That's a nice allowance. We could gear us a Pokeball for that. Uh, yeah, that's the plan. Whenever I'm ungrounded. <laughs> and allowed to leave the house. <laughs> this kid's either probably going to either run away or, like, murder his dad. <laughs> <laughs> he goes, hold it steady, damn it, hold it steady. And they go back to working on whatever it is they are working on. 
All right. Zubat Boy, with that concluded, are you going to go look for your compatriots? Yeah, sure, why not? All right. Speaking of compatriots, Mr. Fister, I believe you're first. Ah, yes. <laughs> what? I was on one end of the spectrum, complete opposite end. <laughs> <laughs> as fast as you can be versus as slow as you can be. Grey one never saw it coming. <sighs> Alrighty. Uh, if I'm honest, I don't know how much I can do to you here. So we're going to figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okie dokie. I'm going to go on an Astonish here. With a natural one, we'll see how this rolls for me, too. Astonishing. It's a 13. Does that break your AC? Yeah, I have a wimpy 11. Okay. I'm astonished. That's, uh, that's what, uh... Ghost damage. Ghost yeah, damage. that is ghost damage. Resistance. Five. You take, if you're resistant, you're half, so three. Four. I don't think he's resistant to ghosts, right? Yeah, he is. Oh, oh really? I didn't know dark type. Ghost. That's cool. So yeah, he takes three. Yeah, ghosts. Yeah, dark uh, dark and ghost, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Greywind, you're down to 26 health, sir, and it's your turn. <clears throat> All right, let me adjust it. He will follow up with. Well, actually, he'll just do a howl for a plus one. To All right. Greywind is going to let out a signature owl of his own. The biggest little owl he could muster. <laughs> Buffing himself up and allowing Mr. Fister another turn. Okay, we're just going to go for a, another. No, we're not. <laughs> okay. Fister, you are attempting to use the power of darkness against a dark type. It is not working very well. All right. Um. All right. Uh, he'll follow up with a bite attack. Let's see. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, yeah, that'll do it. That's gonna hurt. That's gonna hey, hurt. With bite, with that. 19, hey, with a 19 bite fister, that's a flinch. Yep, yep, 19 or 20 flinch, yep. So, one to 10. So, let's see the damage. Oh, fuck. Oh, shit. Ow. Uh, and go again, Braywing, because he flinched. Um. Okay, we'll just try that again, I suppose. So well, that's nice. not very nice of you to do. But I for totally forgot last time that it's actually a plus four to it because of Howl. So we'll do that again. Oh, hecked it up. It won't matter. Because <laughs> he whiffs. Whiff the second go. All right, Fister, you're back in business. That was um, a hefty hit. Tazzle, make me a wisdom save. You have to beat a 13. That is that is not it. <laughs> you can no longer use bite, my friend. <laughs> oh, oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> exactly what I was looking for. Um, so let's... You've been disabled. <laughs> So Imagine Greywind just starts fucking limping and dragging his two back legs. Oh god! Fist, you're not that kind of disabled. Why? 
This is like, I don't know, you told me to disable him. <laughs> you just breaks Grey Wind's jaw. <laughs> <laughs> so kicking sand into Fister. Sand attacks. You can try. What save is that? It's fucking dark. Con save against the eleven. Con save? Yeah, we'll sand attack. You threw sand at a ghost. That's fucked. <laughs> yeah, it's ground type two. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that'll do it. <laughs> All right, so that's Fister Greywind manages to get sand in your one eye. <laughs> <laughs> you take away my bite. See, that's... I throw sand at you. <laughs> that's fucking rude. <laughs> okay, that just lowers my speed, think, though, right? I think disable only works for one turn. Does it? I thought it's it disabled for the whole time. It's got a limit. I don't remember what the limit is. So let's figure this out. Hindering its moves, choose a target in range. The target must succeed on a wisdom saving throw. On a failed save, the last move it activated is unable to be used while you keep concentration. Oh, oh okay. So she's going to work. Uh, okay, so damaging attacks cause break of concentration, correct? Correct. Well, they have a chance to cause break concentration. So, Fisher, anytime you get hit by attack, you can roll for concentration. Well, yes, for the time being, Greywind just cannot use bite. Okay. And sand attack doesn't My turn! Yep, with a minus one to hit, Mr. Fisher, yep. what are you going to do? Oh, minus one. So you'd be plus three, so Seven. 15. Oh. <laughs> 15, yep, that's going to do it. <laughs> that is a... Speaking of 15, go... It's an astonish. Mm -hmm. 13 ghost damage. So that is going to be six. That's an ouchie, Grey Wind. You're down to 20. Okay. <laughs> and just like that, it's all tied up. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly above. Uh, don't worry. What you going to do? I'm going to have to use the only thing I can do and hit with a tackle. You can't. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I literally can't. That's all I have. You can't do anything. <laughs> so I gotta wait. Greywind, it is worth noting by the rules of this by the rules of this type of session, you may always use struggle. Oh yeah. That, <laughs> For two points of attack. damage. So if you want to use struggle, you may roll a melee attack, and if you hit, you do two plus your strength or dex. <laughs> I guess I'm gonna have to do that since normal doesn't work. <laughs> Fister, you disabled his only attack. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it's because I'm smart, goddammit. <laughs> Fister got hit by 122 damage attack. He's like, yep, you will not be doing that shit again. <laughs> I am not stupid. <laughs> 20 plus strength. Yeah, roll a melee attack with either your strength. They also that. concede. There's also that. <laughs> Um, nope, four. <laughs> nope, missed. Zubat boy, <laughs> at this point, you will find Tazel and Kendra in the training grounds sparring with one another. Kendra, standing next to a rather large specimen of an Arbok. <laughs> He's just fucking frothing at the mouth. <laughs> um. As he sees me every now and again, just pet. This giant fucking snake. <laughs> All right. So. All right, let's keep her going. <laughs> Your turn. Four failed. With... Well, that's not it. There it is. Oh, great one! Nice. So what is it? A plus two? Great one. That's two plus. Apparently, two damage. Yeah. You do four points, <laughs> Mr. Fitzer. You take four points of damage. And I need you to roll me a d20. Grayman doesn't even tackle, he just tosses his body like sideways at it. <laughs> a d20 plus on? It's a, for breaking concentration, it's a flat d20. For breaking 50, concentration? 50 50 chance. Yeah, I don't know what the. Well, you broke, broke concentration. So, Grayman, you feel your jaw muscles begin to work again. You can bite. Oh, thank the gods. 
<laughs> the one thing I can do. Fister's like, oh shit. <laughs> that makes it Fister's turn. Hey, Tazzle. <laughs> do a wisdom save. I bet. That's, you're going to try to disable his um, struggle. His jogging. What was it again? Oh, yeah, the, I have zero. Was no, you'll be, you'll be disabling his struggle because it's the last movie used. Oh, I, I won't dis use mm -hmm. discipline. I'll just go. <laughs> uh, oh! Oh. Ouch. What was that? That was an astonish, so you're flinched. All right. Yeah, you're going to lose your next turn, and you're going to take some damage. You take 18. You take nine ghost damage. And you lose your turn, so go again, Fister. Yes, sir. Nine ghost damage after me. Yeah, and you hit him again, but no flinch this time. No flinch this time. Eight. For four more damage. Grimmage. This is this is annoying. I'm doing big boy fucking damage right now and you're freaking <laughs> <laughs> just eating it. This is the only thing I can do. Alright, so we'll Alright, all right, Grey Wind. We'll the world is yours. You may bite once more. <laughs> the temple's three. Do so on a good enough bite and it's all ogre. It's not ogre till it's ogre. Mmm. That's not it, cuz. You missed. <laughs> oh, and unfortunately, the last move you oh, just wait. activated. Never mind, it wouldn't matter. It was just a plus one, so it would have been. Yeah, plus one would not have changed anything, unfortunately. I thought I clicked the run. Reroll. Doesn't matter. Roll a wisdom save. <clears throat> unfortunately, the last thing you activated was bite, so. <laughs> you got to beat 13. It's 11. So it work. That's really high. Oh. 13. That is a big move. That is a big number. He's got a very high wisdom. Hmm? Fair enough. You, you can no longer work, work that jaw. That's dirty. Struggle attack. <laughs> Shut the fuck up, mother. <laughs> Struggle. <laughs> Body toss. Here we go. <laughs> Greywind is fucking struggling. Greywind's like, welcome to Jackass. This is bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> this is struggle, Give me that D20. Uh, nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. It doesn't, doesn't really matter what the plus is with that roll. All right. <laughs> Mister. Oh, Jesus. You're brutalizing <laughs> the poor dog. <laughs> what am I missing now? Mister. Take five damage. You're still alive, Raymond. <laughs> Your turn. He's He's going to run out of those eventually. <laughs> I only got four more. <laughs> Will it be enough? Taz will pop a potion, be toxic. <laughs> oh, fuck you. I don't have any of those. I don't have any of those either. <laughs> um, that doesn't really matter. My quick feet doesn't help. <laughs> Suffering in every negative status condition for this speak by 15%. Yeah, it doesn't help. Okay. Um, Panel, here's a question. What's Brewin's ability? Quick feet. Quick feet? What the fuck does quick feet do? When suffering a negative status effect condition, the Pokemon's speed increases by 15 feet. <laughs> I mean, it's cool in other I mean, ways. It's cool but... in other ways, but. Not how against this particular opponent. He would technically be able to run have 45 movement speed if he was affected. That's pretty fucking solid. It means he can move 90 on a dash. Yeah. Damn. I'm fast as fuck, boy. Almost done. Oh, I'm waiting for an attack from Grey Wind, sir. Oh, struggle attack. If that's what you're going to do, unless you want to try to sand attack again. Don't help him. <laughs> Just lower Fister's accuracy so bad he runs out of PP. I know, I thought of, I thought of that too, but I was like, eh, we'll see. Just get the PP out of him. Exactly. Okay. Oh, am I rolling? So, that's con against eleven. Uh, 
Natural 20. Oh, yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I just, just side shuffle. <laughs> Fisher just moves, it moves his eye to the other socket. <laughs> He's like, fuck you. <laughs> ah, fuck. Sand in the socket. That sucks. <laughs> so what now, Graywin? I guess we can sh struggle, right? Sure. You can always struggle. <laughs> what do you think this is? All right, struggle time. This whole fight's a fucking struggle. There's the hit. <laughs> hey, that's five points of damage, Fister. And uh, Grey Winds uh, is going to try to break your concentration, so roll me a d20. Uh, you maintain your concentration. I, 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 is that <laughs> so Grey Winds still can't bite, and it's your turn. Um, God damn it. And you missed. Nope. All right, Grey Winds. I missed. All right. <laughs> We'll struggle again. That's all he can do at this point, really, unless he wants to throw sand. Nope. Oh, you whiffed the struggle. That's so sad. <laughs> struggling. This is a sad battle. Ah! This is making me sad. <laughs> Bad, sad on both sides. I'm doing mega damage. He's only taking half, and I'm just disabling <laughs> all of his moves. <laughs> We'll do struggle. Oh, that's, yeah, it. that's it. That's five more damage, Mister. Ooh, we're getting tight. <laughs> and uh, let's see if you break con. Oh, broke concentration. Whoa, broke con. Should I attempt a bite? So that's it, Mister. You have six remaining HP, but it's your turn. It is my turn. I'm make it to the next turn. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> So don't, don't, do, don't do it like that. Damage. I think there's one damage, it just doesn't work. It Let's see the damage. Oh, no. What would you say, that? What'd you say uh, Trevor? I didn't hear you. No, I was just saying it was, it was 15 damage. Health, like, minus one, minus one. Yeah, oh. Fister gets a less over Zalas. And, uh... Grey Wind isn't moving anymore. He can't actually see with his eye. He just fucking runs into him. <laughs> Skull first. So, so, so Grey Wind's at minus 20 HP. Oof. Uh, yeah, oh my god. Mean? He's doing half, so he only takes 11. Oh, you lucky bitch. All right, well, Grey Wind's, <laughs> not, Grey Wind's not moving anymore. He's done for. <laughs> the, the, fight is, the fight is decided. <laughs> Fister just goes over to Tazzle, gives him a little bow, and comes back right next to Kendra. His, <laughs> his, his like bow is basically just a fucking head nod. He's like, uh -huh. I just did that. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's like, I am one of the strongest team that you taught me. He did I very am, well. I am the beast. <laughs> I am the beast. He did. He rolled two nat twenties on that, bro. <laughs> That's not fair. Yeah, no, <laughs> 20, yeah. A bunch of follow up of one natural one for me. That's a nat 20 to a natural one. All right. That's I have distributed XP accordingly to the results of the battle. Oh, it is worth noting, Scott, by the way. So Viper got some XP for helping you track. Cool. Um, yeah, that's the conclusion of that fight. <laughs> So much for training. So much for training, Kendra. You were supposed to help him learn, not kick his ass. <laughs> I said he could pick anybody. It's not my fault. My second. <laughs> I didn't expect anything less. If anything, my, sorry, Firebolt. If anything, these drop is my, my team. 